Chapter 3, part 2. Worst years of my life. At least I've got Leo. Do you remember that nursery rhyme, nursery rhyme about Jack Spratt and his wife? How neither of them ate the same thing, but between the two of them, they got the job done. Same deal with me and Leo. Except the fat and the lean are words and pictures. Makes sense? I do the talking and Leo takes care of the drawing. Leo speaks to me sometimes, but that's about it. Conversation just isn't his thing. If Leo wanted to tell you that your house was on fire, he'd probably draw you a picture to let you know. The guy's about as talkative as a giraffe. Oh, I've got a thousand of them, ladies and gentlemen. Say hi, Leo. Hello. Um, the, all the things are saying, so are you talking to me, blah, blah, blah. Um, see what I mean? Besides, if it's true that a picture's worth a thousand words, then my buddy Leo has more to say than anyone I've ever met. You just have to know how to listen. Bottom line, Leonardo the Silence is my best friend at Hills Village. Or anybody else. Oh, sorry, or anywhere else. And before his head gets too big to fit through the door, I should say there's not a whole lot of competition for that title. I'm not exactly what you might see in the dictionary when you look up popular. Which brings me to the next thing that happened that day. Chapter 4. Ra, 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 yada, yada, yada. After homeroom, they'd usually ship us off to first period. But today was special. There was going to be a big school assembly to kick off the year. And everyone, everyone was all excited about it. Of course, by everyone, I mean everyone but me. They herded us all into the gym and sat us down on the bleachers. There was a podium on the floor with a microphone and a big sign on the wall. Welcome to HVMS. The principal, Mr. Dwight, got up and spoke. After a speech that went something like, Welcome, blah, 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 blah. Without further ado, blah. Um, this is the picture of all the, the assembly before I start reading it. Boom, boom. He brought out cheerleaders who brought out the football, soccer and cross country teams who brought everyone to their feet yelling and screaming. Of course, by everyone, I mean everyone but me. The only things missing were the circus tents and a couple of dancing elephants. After that, Mrs. Stryker announced that anyone who wanted to run for student council representative should come down to the microphone and address the assembly. Five or six kids got from every grade stood up like they'd been expecting this. I guess Mr. Rourke might have said something about it in homeroom, but I'd been too busy waiting for Miller to drive a pencil through the back of my neck. I hadn't paid attention to too much else. They started with the sixth graders first. We heard from two bozos, who I didn't know, then a guy named Matt Krushik, who ate his own boogers until fourth grade. And then, hi everyone, I'm Jeanette Galetta. About half of the 6th grade and even some of the 7th and 8th graders started clapping right away. She must have gone to Millbrook Elementary because I'd never seen her before. I went to Seagrave Elementary where we chased rats in gym class and most of the kids got free lunch, including me. I think I'd be a good class representative because I know how to listen, Jeannie said. And there's nothing more important than that. I was listening. I was listening. She was pretty for sure. She had the kind of face that you just want to stare at for as long as possible. But she also seemed kind of cool. Like she didn't think she was better than anybody else. Even if she was. I have a lot of good ideas for how to make the school a better place. She goes on. But first, I want to do one thing. She leaves the mic and comes over, right in front of where I'm sitting. Then she looks at me and says, Are you Rafe? Suddenly I'm feeling about as talkative as Leo, but I manage to spit out an answer. That's me, I say. 
Do you want to maybe split a large fries in the cafeteria later? She asks. Sure, I'm buying, I say, because there's a $20 bill in my pocket that I just found that morning. No, she says, the fries are on me. Meanwhile, everyone's watching. The band starts playing, the cheerleaders start cheering. And Miller the Killer chokes to death on a peanut M&M. Then I win the lottery, world peace breaks out everywhere. And Mrs. Stryker tells me that based on my all-around awesomeness, I can just skip sixth grade and come back next year. Rafe Kachadorian, please report back to Earth. So there's a picture of Jeannie, and there's the PA announce system paging him back down to Earth. So I hope you'll vote for me, Jeannie was saying, and everyone started clapping like crazy. I've never even, I never even heard most of her speech, but she definitely had my vote. Chapter 5, The Oh-So-Cruel Rules The next girl to speak at assembly was Lexi Winchester. I knew Lexi from old school, and she was a real nice kid. Still, Jean Galera had my vote. Sorry, Lex. Once the speeches were over, I thought the assembly was done too. No such luck. Mrs. Stryker came back to the microphone and held up a little green book so everyone could see it. Can anyone please tell me what this is? Mrs. Stryker said. Yeah, Miller the Killer mumbled somewhere behind me. A complete waste of time. This, Mrs. Stryker said, is the Hills Village Middle School Code of Conduct. Everything you need to know about how to behave at school and how not to behave is right here in this book. A bunch of teachers came round and started handing out a copy to each student in the gym. When you receive yours, open up to page one and follow along with me, Stryker said. Then she started reading really slowly. Section one, Hills Village Middle School Dress Code. When I got my copy, I flipped all the way to the back of the book. There were 16 sections and 26 pages total. In other words, we were going to be lucky to get out of this assembly by Christmas. All students are expected to dress appropriately for an academic environment. No student shall wear clothing of a size more than two beyond his or her normal size. Help, that's what I was thinking about then. Middle school had just started and they were already trying to bore us to death. Please, somebody stop Mrs. Stryker before she kills again. Leah took out a pen and started drawing something on the inside of the back cover. Stryker turned to the next page and kept reading. Section 2, Prohibited Items. No student shall bring to school any electronic equipment not intended for class purposes. This includes cell phones, iPods, cameras, laptop computers. The whole thing went on and on and on and on. By the time we got to section six, grounds for expulsion, my brain was turning into guacamole and I'm pretty sure my ears were bleeding too. People always talk about how great it is to get older. All I saw were more rules and more adults telling me what I could and couldn't do in the name of what's good for me. Yeah, well, asparagus is good for me, good for me but it still makes me want to throw up. As far as I could tell, this little green book in my hands was just one long list of all the ways I could and probably would get into trouble between now and the end of the school year. Meanwhile, Leah was drawing away like the maniac he is. Every time Stryker mentioned another rule, he scribbled something else on the page in front of him. <clears throat> Finally, he turned it around and showed me what he was working on. Rules are made for breaking. All I could think when I saw the picture was, I want to be that kid. He looked like he was having a way better day than I was. And that's when I got my idea. My really stupendous, really, really big idea. It came on like a flash flood. This was the best idea 
anyone had ever had in the whole history of middle school, in the whole history of ideas. Not only was it going to help me get through the year, I thought it might also just save my life here at Hills Village. That was if I had the nerve to actually try it.